I think the story of the Glen Coulee Dam sh probably should start with the fact that it almost did not happen the way it did. Uh, at the end of the um, uh, aqueduct construction in the Southern California desert, Dr. Garfield was, uh, felt he was finished with construction work and uh, wanted to get started with his dream of starting a, a uh, private practice in Los Angeles. That uh, one day, Dr. I mean, Mr. Uh, uh, Alonzo Ordway, uh, Mr. Kaiser's oldest employee, called Dr. Garfield and said uh, he would like to have him go up to uh, take a look at a project in Grand Coulee Dam. The Kaiser Company had just gotten the lead uh, uh, management uh, responsibility for building that dam across the big uh, Columbia River. It was to be the largest uh, construction project in the world at the time. And um, uh, Edgar Kaiser was to be the manager and he kind of wanted to talk to Dr. Garfield. Well, Dr. Garfield told uh, Mr. Ordway, no thanks. He uh, had had enough construction uh, business. Uh, he wanted to uh, just settle down in Los Angeles. Mr. Ordway said, well, would you please, as a favor to me, go up at least just talk to uh, Edgar. He has a problem with the medical care at, the, at Grand Coulee. So Dr. Garfield rather grudgingly said okay as a favor to you only because actually uh, Mr. Ordway had been uh, instrumental in, in developing the prepayment arrangement with the insurance company. Um, so he felt he was obligated to, to, uh, uh, fa to answer the favor that Ordway asked. So he went up to uh, uh, Multnomah Hotel. Uh, is that in Portland or Spokane? Portland, I think. Um, and uh, was told to wait in the lobby. He waited there for two hours and getting very impatient. He didn't want to come in the first place. He actually was getting ready to call a taxi to come go back to the airport. When he did get the call from Edgar, said, come on up, let's talk. Um, what Edgar wanted to do was to drive him over to the, the dam site. During the course of the, of the drive, Edgar told him that the uh, workmen the, and the union were adamant against the kind of medical care that they had had during the first phase of the, of the uh, job. That is the coffer dam where where they shifted the river from one side to the other to prepare the, the uh, base rock for cement. Um, so, uh, and he didn't know what to do about it, and, and at least would, he, would Garfield ride out and, and take a look. So, said, um, once he saw the place, he, his imagination uh, took over. Here was something entirely different than the uh, desert had been with workmen spread all across miles and miles of desert. Here in one place, 
was a, uh, uh, a group of uh, workmen living together uh, with a small town beside it, uh, another fairly uh, sized Bureau of Reclamation federal employees, a nice little hospital, and uh, uh, the opportunity maybe of trying the experiment that had worked so well in the desert of prepayment to a group of physicians under the prepayment and uh, well, maybe he'd take a, take a look at it. So um, he did commit himself after all. So anyway, Dr. Garfield then, as I said, had to get a staff. The uh, two of the fellows left that were, had been there, and the other two were not very interested in the new setup. He went first to uh, Seattle, to the uh, Washington Medical School, and found that the, the idea uh, was not acceptable, that there was not a very good uh, reputation for what had been going on there. And there were just no doctors in the medical school or the residency program or anybody that he could find would be interested. So he went down to Portland. Same thing happened. Nobody was interested in going to uh, Cooley. He went down to uh, Los Angeles County Hospital where he had trained and uh, didn't find anybody very in interested. Uh, did find an old classmate, Dr. Wally Neighbor, who was an internist that uh, uh, at the time he had left the, the hospital but and was practicing at Arrowhead Springs. I uh, had uh, would clientele, but he was kind of tired of that, and, and maybe he would go along with Sid as the internist. Uh, Dr. Garfield then went to Iowa, his, where he had gone to medical school, uh, found a uh, young uh, general practitioner that had just started practice in an outskirts of the city that wasn't very happy with his practice and he might join as a, as a general practitioner. Still didn't have a surgeon. So um, finally he came to Stanford. He had been referred to me and, and uh, so we sat down and talked, uh, listened to the idea of prepayment. Sounded pretty good. Sounded like a, really a continuation of practice with the medical school. Uh, you didn't have to worry about billing uh, the patients or, or billing the insurance company. Uh, the finances were taken care of by uh, the prepayment idea. And if we could have a group of physicians working together, it would be much like a continuation of of the residency program, which was was um, uh, very comfortable. But um, I told him I already had a job that signed up in San Francisco as the assistant to the uh, to the leading industrial orthopedic surgeon in San Francisco. Had been introduced in the uh, Bohemian Club. And his society, we had uh, uh, an apartment uh, picked out uh, at the foot of Coint Tower on Telegraph Hill, a uh, beautiful view of the bay. And it seemed like that was probably what I was going to do. But uh, give me his telephone and I'll think about it. And... Um, 
So I, I told him I would call him back. I did think about it. Um, uh, called Dr. Garfield uh, in Los Angeles and told him that um, he might consider it, but he'd have to talk to my dean, Yank Chandler, uh, the dean of the medical school at Stanford. Uh, he had a way of making his students feel that they were kind of special, and, uh, and he wanted to know how they were, what they were going to do and what they're going to get into. So I told Dr. Garfield he'd have to talk to Dr. Chandler. So he flew up. He and Dr. Chandler spent about half an hour or so uh, in the room alone. And when Dr. Garfield came out, he uh, looked terribly forlorn. He said, I guess it's all over. Um, so then I went in and talked to Chandler. Dr. Chandler said that this idea of prepayment, it's, it's uh, not acceptable in medical uh, economics. Um, if you go up there, you'll be ostracized for life. You won't get into medical society. You won't be admitted to hospitals. Uh, you, you can't do it. I don't know. Somehow or other, that challenged me. <laughs> so I, uh, I told, said maybe if I went up and took a look at it, might be. My wife was a good sport. She said, sure, go ahead. Um, so I flew up. Three surgical nurses. So I practically stole the uh, surgical de uh, department of San Francisco County Hospital. They came up and um, we um, had a first class little hospital, good su surgery. And we, uh, our first interest was the workmen. In about two months, the unions came, said they would uh, uh, strike if they didn't uh, have a health plan for the workers as well as the industrial care. So they wanted us, wanted us to take care of, the, of all of their illnesses as well as the families and so on. So, so we hadn't, hadn't uh, gotten into the uh, family coverage then, but Dr. Garfield um, said, well, let's try it. Just give it a 50 cents a, a week, the same as, as we charge the uh, workers. Um, and um, so we got busy with Pearl Harbor. Uh, as I say, things changed. Um, I was uh, included in a, a mass mash unit from the uh, uh, residents of the. San Francisco County Hospital, where I have been. Um, and uh, was about to join them um, when Dr. Garfield asked me if I would come down to uh, the Richmond the shipyards. The Kaisers had the, had the job of, of building ships and uh, so I said, well, that, that sounds better than joining the Army, uh, but I, uh, I don't know whether you can get me out or not. Anyway, I came down uh, the 1st of March, 1941, or 42, and um, looked uh, at the 
beginning shipyards of, of Richmond. There was one shipyard going. Uh, the Kaisers had had a, an earlier uh, contract with the British government to build some ships, but they now had contract to build uh, victory ships, or liberty ships, rather. Um, we're building two, two more shipyards, uh, and uh, expecting some ninety thousand workmen to be moved into the area uh, within a few months. I saw the uh, spot knee deep in mud where there were. Uh, planning uh, the foundation for a first aid station, which uh, soon grew to uh, a glorified station and then added a few beds. And as the course of the war grew, it, it grew into a full-fledged hospital with uh, some 60 beds, with a full-fledged surgery a delivery, pediatric, OB department, and um, um, a very busy uh, unit. During the, during the um, uh, days at the Richmond Hospital, we would, uh, uh, w once it got full blown, we were uh, very busy. We had an ambulance service of, of four or five ambulances that would make rounds of the then three shipyards and then make rounds, pick up injuries or uh, illnesses and so on at each yard and, and come back to the uh, main station uh, about every 20 minutes. So we'd, every, we'd get a, either one or a dozen patients uh, come in, uh, and uh, it was a very busy place. In the meantime, we had purchased the uh, old uh, Fabiola Hospital. Uh, Dr. Garfield and Mr. Kaiser uh, refurbished that and um, uh, made a, a complete little hospital, surgery, delivery rooms, uh, one floor of uh, medical medicine. Then, of course, with the big bomb, the, uh, the shipyard closed almost overnight. And... Um, um, the workers were scattered around in small jobs around the area. <clears throat> Our membership dropped from the 90,000 or 100,000 or more down to a few hundred, actually, just, just Kaiser employees. Um, so uh, the question of whether we should keep on, I remember... <clears throat> Dr. Garfield, who uh, was living with us at that time, which is a whole other story, um, and I sat down and he said, do you, do you think we ought to keep on going? Do you think the doc doctors uh, would stay and, and work? And I said, I, I think they would. They, they have learned to appreciate the kind of prepaid group practice that we have. We think it's, it's a, uh, certainly a, as good and much, we think, better way of practicing medicine. I think, I think we can get doctors. So um, uh, about that time, of course, when the war ended, the physicians of the, of the area 
the region in Oakland and San Francisco came back and uh, they frowned on our program. We were ostracized, as Dr. Chandler said we would be. Um, we were ostracized for the medical society. Uh, we were told we were not welcome at uh, any other hospitals. Uh, and it was uh, oh, uh, several years of gradually uh, developing respectability. We were called communists, socialists. Uh, we'd go to a social meeting where other doctors would turn their backs on us and spurn us. Um, I remember one story Dr. Garfield loved to tell. There was at one meeting he happened to be with Dr. Ray Lyman Wilbur. Uh, I don't know whether you, your records have that story. Um, he, uh, Dr. Garfield, found himself standing beside Dr. Wilbur, and as as uh, Dr. Garfield has said, he didn't know what got into him to have enough guts, but he turned to doc, Dr. Wilbur, who was was president of Stanford University. Um, why are the doctors all against us? And Dr. Wilbur said, young man, you're not wearing a crown of thorns. Said, anything that is different will be, will be, will have uh, objections. If you're not doing anything good, you would not, uh, you would not be uh, uh, having trouble. Uh, you should be glad of the fact that you are changing things, something like that. Anyway, Dr. Garfield was elated with that story, and um, he came back uh, that night uh, extremely and optimistic. Dr. Jo uh, Dr. Garfield was a very quiet, very shy man. People got the idea that maybe he was uh, a little uh, up, uh, uppity, but uh, he wasn't at all. It was simply his shyness. He could observe, uh, but uh, his, uh, his leadership was, I think, the confidence uh, that in what uh, we were doing was correct, uh, something that uh, we did not need to be ashamed of. Um, his uh, uh, imagination, his, his uh, uh, enthusiasm. His enthusiasm waned somewhat, but he never, never lost his belief in what we were doing. Um, so I would say that uh, it was, it was complete faith in what he was doing that was. Some, somehow seeped into the rest of us uh, in having that same faith. <laughs>